Hi, it's G from Native Speakers Academy, and I'm here with one of my students. This is Richard, and he's going to answer a few questions about his experiences in the education system here. And we will see where the conversation goes. So, first of all, Richard, how old are you? I'm 15. Okay, and where do you go to school right now? Uh, I'm... I go to primary school in Banska Bystrica. Mm -hmm. Oh, Skuteckeho <laughs> Osim. Okay, yeah. super. Now, the Slovak system is a little bit different from the British system. So when, um, for example, in the British system, you go into primary school at age five and you finish at age 12. But mm -hmm. the Slovak system is, is different, right? Yeah, uh, it's from one year, from year one to year nine. Okay. And but you you can go from year eight to g gymnasium, mm -hmm. and oh, there you study for five years. Mm -hmm. But if you don't uh, wanna, uh, if you don't want to go to gymnasium, you studied in primary school nine years and after nine years you go to high school mm -hmm. okay so where in britain primary school is around seven years in slovakia it's around nine years nine or eight, eight. you can choose okay super and then when you are finishing the primary school there's a choice of different schools that you can go to right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay so uh do you know which school that you want to go to? Yeah, I think, or, uh, I would like to go, uh, to Tajovského, mm -hmm. uh, school, high school mm -hmm. in Banska Bystrica. Okay, and what is, why that school specifically? What is, what is special about that school? Yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's not specific in, at all. <laughs> I think, well, um, it's kind of everything. High school. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a general school. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and uh, in your school at the moment, what are the subjects that you like, and what are the subjects that you don't like? Well, uh, my favorite subject it's math. Mm -hmm. But I also like English and uh, and other languages, and it's all I think. Okay, so you like math and English, and what subjects do you not like? Uh, I don't like chemistry. <laughs> okay. And a little bit physics, but it's less. Okay, so. If there are subjects that you like least, for example, chemistry and, and physics, are there any special reasons why you don't like those subjects? Uh, because I I have to learn for the for these subjects, mm -hmm. and it's not so big problem. But firstly, I when we learned some topics, I. Firstly, I uh, don't understand the uh, topic, and mm -hmm. the next lesson we write the test. So it's it's the way why I don't like uh, these subjects. And the other way is that we we don't do any. Uh, any practically or uh, ex mm. practical exercises, experiments, practical maybe? experiments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we we talked about this before this conversation. Yes, where yeah, yeah, yeah. I made the the analogy that science without experiments is like trying to learn to swim by reading a book. It, yeah. it really doesn't make much sense unless you go through some physical 
part of the activity of actually doing the experiments because all the great chemists and physicists and scientists of history were people who did experiments they, they did things yeah, to find yeah. out what the result would be and I don't see how you can get anyone interested in science by getting them to study from, books. from a book. That's yeah, it, it, you need in chemistry, you need a laboratory, you need the um, materials, you need to mix things together, you need to see what kind of reactions occur in, in physics. You know, I often thought that a great way to learn physics, maybe maybe this is not a good idea, I don't know, a great way to learn physics would be to study how people play snooker and pool and billiards, because I think everything is, is visible in, in those games. So um, in Slovak you call it bil billiards, right? Mm. And, but in the, Which in Britain and America is pool. So you've got the table, you've got the balls, you've got, you've got the cue to hit the balls, and everything is physics. The yeah. movement of the balls, the angles, the geometry, the way everything works, it's all its all physics. And I think that that if you can understand that, then well, that's physics. That, that's it. There's not much yeah. <laughs> there's not much more than you that you need to do to get all the basics. Um, uh, so that that's that's my plan with my, my son. I'll get him a little table and he'll work out the physics all by himself, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, just, maybe, maybe we'll see. And you play basketball as well, and that's the same thing, right? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the physics of the this, the weight of the ball, the distance from the basket, the amount of energy that you need to put in the shot. It's 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 all basic physics um, that you need to apply to to make it all work. Which is which is fun, right? Playing basketball is more fun than sitting with your physics book trying to understand. Yeah, 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 of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you you don't learn basketball from book, but from practices and practical practical experience. Yeah, and and getting out and playing the game. Yeah. Right? And, and practicing is great, and 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 playing games for for fun is great. But then it, it's it's in the real game that 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 you learn and you remember and you and you get interested and you grow and you do all those yeah. things. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a big failure in education that they don't have it so practically based. Um, I remember when I went to school, science was split into two parts. One was knowledge and understanding, and the other was practical experience. And from the knowledge and understanding, I remember very little, but from the experiments, I remember much more. So, mm -hmm. so, so definitely that was, that was more interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know you're interested in sports. So how much sport do you get uh, in your in your school or sports? Um, well, we have two time two times physical education uh, a week. Mm -hmm. So it's not so many. <laughs> so uh, what, um, and two times. What does that mean? Two times forty five minutes? Or? Yeah. 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 Oh, one lesson takes forty-five minutes. Just so that's wait, wait, so that's, together that's, during one week, it's just uh, one hour and a half. That is ridiculously stupid to have only ninety minutes. Yeah, of if sports. if I don't do any sport mm, behind the school, I I I'm going to be fair because <laughs> we <laughs> we. We don't do anything at these lessons. We just, I don't know, uh, run some minutes, about 10 minutes, and then we just play some games. And half of the class just stay on the, one, on one place and <laughs> do nothing. Yeah, um, what can we say about that? that I look, if you've got 45, 45, first of all, trying to do anything in 45 minutes is is madness. I mean, yeah. the, the meetings that we have here in, in the school when we work on, on languages, these, these are a minimum of 90 minutes because you need 90 minutes to get anything done at all. Yeah. You, you, you just 45 minutes, what is that? It's like five minutes to change your clothes 
minimum five minutes. You need to get in the changing room, change your clothes, get into the hall. So that's five minutes at the start, five minutes at the end. So that's 35 minutes you've got yeah. for all your activity. Then you need your, your warm-up and your organization and the, the, the time for the teacher to give instructions to the students. Time for the teacher to stop the students and tell them they're doing it all wrong and yeah. <laughs> explain to them how yeah. to do it right. And maybe you spend half the time standing in one place, so maybe you've got 10, 15 minutes sort of real movement and activity in each session. So you've got 15 minutes, so you do that twice a week, so that's 30 minutes of, of mobility and activity you get yeah. from physical education in school. And I know because I've read a bit about this because I have a background in, in physical education and sport as well, that organizations like the American Medical, Medical Association state that each person needs a minimum of 30 minutes activity per okay. day in yeah. order to stay healthy. And that's when the human body is designed to move all of the time. We're not, not like we're, we're sitting here for this interview because it it's easier than running <laughs> running around and doing it. But uh, um, but the, the human body's meant is designed for movement. That's why we got legs and, and, and these these dangly arms and things and uh, joints and 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 because so, we're we're designed to move around in our environment to do things. And this idea that you can give students 30 minutes of activity a week and that's going to be enough for them it's just it's absolutely crazy and young people need to move right yeah you need to yeah, you course. need to move and not sit in one place because it's just not natural and after two classes of chemistry and two classes of physics and two classes of history <laughs> yeah yeah Ready and to nowadays children are like that, just sitting behind, oh, behind, before computers and playing computer games, or sitting in the class and just looking to the books, and nothing like moving or, or I don't know, playing outside in fresh air, <laughs> just close in the school. I think we should uh, go outside, we should go more outside somewhere and, I don't know, to to the fresh air <laughs> and also physical education like in my school are in very very bad level, we, what I said, we didn't do anything, we don't do anything there. Yeah, and if there's someone who enjoys physical education and who's good at sports like you, there's there's not much benefit for you. There's there's not much there for you because either you're either you're good and you're pulling other people up to your level or you're being pulled down to other other people's level and it's usually being pulled down that happens in the education. Yeah, and some Couples, couple years ago, there were good uh, levels of physical education, and there were better teacher. But now, uh, when when I do I don't know fifty push-ups, and I get mark one, and someone gets just ten push-ups and also gets now uh, mark one, it's it's kind of, it's very unfair, I think, but also it's, it's very high, or no high, but very low level, I think, of the physical education nowadays in schools. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. If you look at the elite schools, look at the top schools, the best schools that, that exist within the world. One of the little secrets about the best schools is they all have lots of physical education yeah. in the schools because there's so much you can learn from the activity of uh, training and preparing for sports and playing the games and being part of a team and using strategies and, and, and teamwork and all the 
all the preparation, all the little things around about, like getting the right equipment and uh, the differences between the different kinds of equipment and um, the the investment of time and money that you need to put into getting things right and I, even things like organizing and transportation so the team can get from one place to another place. There is so much involved in the activity of sport that uh, can teach us things that we that we need in life and it seems to be in most schools a a, a, a minimal subject. Like it, it's a subject where you can really express yourself and really get a lot out if, if you want, and and it just isn't promoted very well. I sometimes feel the same about m music as well. A very expressive subject, and students get the absolute minimum of, of mm -hmm. anything in, in in music if they get it at all. And uh, also, if you look at where. If you look at the classical tradition of education, you go back to Greece and Athens and uh, in Rome. If you had an opportunity to get an education there, which was, was usually in the upper classes, but if you had an opportunity to get an education, part of the education was physical training, yeah. because the aim was to achieve excellence in all areas of life, not just to build knowledge in the brain but uh, to, to build yourself physically as well oh. to, to be good in all areas and I'm on a rant here sorry <laughs> the, the brain the, the brain doesn't work if you don't put oxygen and if you don't yeah, put lots of oxygen of course. In. so so running around doing doing the sports activity it improves your reflexes it improves um, uh, how you think about things how you interact with people it's just benefit 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 oh. benefit benefit and there's one, one elite school that I know in Scotland called Gordonston. It's supposed to be this, this big secret because the royal family send all their children there. And the only reason I know about it is because I, where, where I grew up and where I went to school was about 15 kilometers away from that, that mm -hmm. school. And um, uh, what they do every day is the first thing they do in the morning is they get up and they go for a jog. Doesn't matter what the weather, and the weather in Scotland is always terrible, right? Imagine rain, raining all the time. So they get yeah. up at six o'clock in the morning, all the students are out into the rain, jogging around yeah. the, the parks and fields. They get back, they have their breakfast, they go to, to school, they study their lessons in the morning, and then in the afternoon, it's sports. All afternoon. Yeah. All afternoon dedicated to a wide variety of sports activities from classical football, rugby and hockey, but the, the British hockey that yeah, yeah, I know. Is, is different from the ice hockey. And um from from that to things like horse riding and uh sailing and boating and, and other activities that, that people can learn things from. So um it's uh, it's crazy to lock people in a room and try to teach them about the world because the world is outside of the room, basically. So thank you for letting me talk about <laughs> that a little bit. Right. Mm, it's not, it's but um, what, what's your opinion about that? Yes. Yeah. Well, about sports? Or? Yeah, about sports in, in, in general. In school. Yeah, it's, I, well, in my world, it's... <laughs> It's terrible level of educate sports because what I said we we don't do nothing in these lessons and I don't know like in that school in Scotland if it's bad bad uh, bad weather when it's raining or snowing. <laughs> You just have to go and do that sport, but here, oh, it's raining, we sit here and, I don't know, do five push-ups and we can go away. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, char it's character it, building to, to, to go out in the rain and, and do something is a challenge. Yeah, yeah. And if if you don't do something which is difficult for yourself to do, you don't you don't grow in in any way, and nobody, or I say nobody, very few people, when it's if it's raining outside, look outside at the rain and go, 
oh yeah i'm so happy it's raining and i'm gonna go right. outside and do something but you still have to say okay it's raining but i'm not gonna let that stop mm -hmm. me i've got something i want to do i go out and and um and, and do it and that's what builds character in people it really annoys me when uh when, when people oh it's, it's raining i'm not going out it's <laughs> ah ah it's not <laughs> it's not gonna hurt yeah, well, then it's kind of lazy people, and it's more and more these people in the world. So, yeah, well, there's a there's a growing problem within the Western world with things like obesity, people getting fat, yeah, people eating too many of the wrong kinds of foods, uh, too many sugary foods, yeah, and they re they they need the exercise and they're not getting any. Then we have these lifestyles where, as you as you said, people sit in front of the computers, and then you go to school and you have to sit at a desk, and then and um, what is it? The average person needs to walk seven to ten thousand steps a day minimum, and some people are just getting out of bed, walking to the bus stop, getting on a bus, going to school, sitting in the classroom, walking around the school getting back on a bus going home and it's kind of that that's all that's all the, the movement and exercise they get in a day and okay one day is, is okay but if you're doing that every day for a year and you're not huh? you're not getting enough exercise you're gonna your body's not going to be strong you're not going to you're going to get sick and if you don't do these things when you're young you're not going to do them when you're older yeah, because you don't suddenly start developing yeah. great habits at the age of forty if you haven't done them your 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 whole life, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And um, and there are so many advantages to being healthy as well. You 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 you, you lower medical bills. You you can, you can, you can do more activities. Um, it's it's a good feeling to go to the, the the beach or whatever and go swimming or play beach volleyball or something like that. The more you do, the more you can do. Yeah. As well. So um, all these things are really positive elements of, of sport. And they give you two periods of 45 minutes a week and say, here you are, this is sport or physical education. <laughs> it's... it's, it's uh, it's crazy. Another thing just came into my head is that you can make more money playing football than you can doing things like teaching. Yeah. So you can make a whole career, a successful career, from sport. Whether it's playing the sport or coaching the sport or providing some services to the sport or selling selling equipment to the sport. Yeah. Um, so that it's a huge industry in in the world. So um, if you, if you just focus on sport, there are so many options available to people who who, uh, who want to do that. Um, I'm just thinking in this town, you know, you, the people who play, for example, ice hockey here can make more money than I don't know people working in an office if you play it to a good standard and a good level. So. Um, and when people help you to choose your future career, they don't, they don't really say, "Hey, oh, you want to play basketball? Yeah, that's a great idea. Train and, and go in that direction." Because they, they 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 say, "Why don't you study economics? Or uh, why don't you um, why don't you do languages and translations and th <laughs> and things?" Yeah, it's like, and you can and and all those things are great, but if you can. Earn more kicking a ball around. Why, 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 why not? Well, why not do something like that? So, uh, well, so yeah, when people find just little problem uh, with, I don't know, some exercise or some uh, sports <laughs> with sports, little problem with sport, they they don't they do don't do that <laughs> simple <laughs> so 
Yeah, it's, it's just... I think it's one of the reasons that people, when they see little, little bit rain on the sky or uh, gray clouds, they just, oh, I, I, I will just, oh, uh, it's gonna be, it's going to be rain. I, I will just sitting here, and they don't go, they don't go to, I don't know, jogging, for example, because. Mm-hmm little problem and they don't do that <laughs> yeah I think that is it, we know that from country to country people have different habits and um, I grew up in a country where it rains in Scotland it rains <laughs> every day and then uh, I come to a country like Slovakia where summer is hot winter is cold and sometimes you get periods of two weeks it doesn't rain And uh, the uh, the people here have this perspective of oh it's raining I'm not going outside and not nothing would ever happen in my country <laughs> if you didn't go if 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 you stayed inside every time every time it rained it's uh it's a, it creates a different sort of perspective on on the world. Um, Maybe that's why Scotland has so many scientists and inventors because everyone has to stay. In, everyone decided to stay inside and do something. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's get back to teaching. Um, we talked a little bit about your experiences in school, and we talked a little bit about um, the fact that there's not really good sports teaching in physical education. Is there anything? About your school that you're not really satisfied or happy with that you would you would like to change apart from that. Well, poof. yeah, I think about school system, but in whole Slovakia, because um, for example, today, not today, but yesterday, a uh, teacher. Um, uh, were protesting again because they have uh not good pay, or but also the government of schools, uh, I would say it's very bad because we have very old, uh, for example, books, and when we learn something in school. Uh, and we, and it's the, I don't know, it's, uh, the teach what we have to, uh, learn in, 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 in our school, in primary school. So the, uh, the old books are like that, that when we learn some information, that information are not in the book, so, and so, It's very, it's horrible. I think the uh, whole system of schools. It's terrible. My aunt is also teacher, and they they don't have any, I don't know, equipments to to learn students or no equipments, but better, modern, more modern equipments. To learn, for example, my school we have a, we don't have any laborat uh, laboratory in school, just sitting uh, on the, uh, just sitting and read some old informations. And that's all. <laughs> What about the the actual teachers themselves? Are you satisfied with the the level of teaching do you feel that they're good at their job yeah well i have to say that we have very uh good mat- mathematic teacher in school mm-hmm. in our school uh she she learned uh it very very well i understand everything what she say and it's good because she 
she do she does her work um, more or she works more than she uh, should be or it's normal level mm -hmm. she works more and she give us uh, more uh, I don't know more mm, we more we more counting on the lessons and she give us some lists to count to counting so it's to, some some extra things that she yeah yeah oh, she give us some extra things yeah, exactly she don't uh, she doesn't have to but she this is the good way that uh she gives us some extra Materials, extra uh, questions, uh, yeah. examples. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. she she adds extra value to yeah. to the education that's there, which is one of the things that teachers have to do is is supplement, put in extra things for the groups of students that they teach, because each group of students is slightly different. You can't have one book that's the right book for everybody. It, it's yeah. just crazy. You can't have one style of teaching which is the right style for everybody. It's this this idea that that one T-shirt can be the right T-shirt and the right size for everybody is is just really crazy. And the uh, one size fits everybody kind of education. Um, in this world where everything is everything that you could want is personalized people have pcs personal computers they custom their cars they get architects and designers to design their houses and, and the homes um, in, in a world where you can customize everything it seems crazy that Education is the one thing where we have no customization at all. It, it, the, huh. the, it's it's like they they create something and they just throw it out there and whatever happens happens and they're not too worried about the fact that that some people in the middle will get something out of it but the good students will get nothing and the bad students or the students who don't understand at, at the other end will also get nothing from it so it's it's really crazy um, another point is the teachers who work more and put in the extra effort they might get better results f from their students which is which is great but they're not going to get any extra credit or any extra bonus or any extra money from their job for the extra that they do so yeah 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 we talked so, about that yeah. before as well. It's a little bit about motivation. What is there to motivate teachers to be better than they are, to do more than the minimum? And of course, you get better. You you get good people who just do extra because they know they need to do it. But if you're not giving them any extra credit or any extra benefit for that, then then over a period of time, I, I don't think they'll be they're going to keep putting in the extra time the extra hours creating the extra material and also those who do less might be might start to feel a little bit jealous that someone's doing more and it kind of puts a bit of pressure on the teachers in the system and those who do less don't really like those who do more because it makes them look bad so whereas in the private sector of, of business you're motivated by keeping the customer happy and giving all these incentives and extras to people who do good work in schools what do the teachers get no, no nothing really well they, they get more work because they get more students because more students come to them because they're good teachers yeah. and so uh, it's 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 very difficult in that kind of situation to have progress to improve to go forward and then the good teachers get more students and this just tires them out, they run out of energy uh, eventually and then they have to leave teaching. So many good teachers I know have 
left teaching and going to work in banks and insurance companies and in other industries because uh, they're more appreciated there than they than they are in the schools. Um, we're running a little bit over over time. We see on the clock. Can we do five more minutes? Do you have to go or can we do? Oh yeah, we can. Do we do five more minutes? Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll, yeah. Just, we'll just keep going for five more minutes, right? Thank you. Um, so we talked about the teach. Are there some teachers in in school that that uh, you mentioned? Your your math teacher is 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 good. What makes a what makes a teacher a good teacher, in your opinion? Well, I think well, oh. Uh, how would I say? <laughs> uh, firstly, uh, she can to uh, to explain us the some topic, and it's and good. So she can good explain some topic, and it's I think it's very important because. Uh, not every teacher can explain very well something. We have also in our schools some very stupid, sorry, but really stupid <laughs> teachers. They just uh, uh, say um, the topic is on the page 50 in the books. Learn it, and next lesson I will taste. Taste. I will mm, check you. <laughs> test. Or, test you. Yeah, test you. So it's it's also about teacher. Yeah, and we have just I don't know three or four good teachers in our school f uh, from. Uh, I don't know, twenty, twenty-five. So the level of teachers is also uh, lower than I don't know than a couple of years ago, and it's also very bad because now the primary school are the worst. Primary uh, primary teachers are the worst teachers in <laughs> in schools. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because they they have, I think, five years of preparation and special. Yeah, but well, uh, if you are good teacher, uh, you go to university to teach in university or to high school as. Uh, Professor, mm -hmm. but well, I don't say uh, that every teacher is stupid, uh, which goes to primary school. But I think they are they they are worse than uh, in high schools or universities. Yeah, there's it. it it's hard to say. Um, why that is and again it's different from school to school it, it's really individual you can have good schools with bad teachers and bad schools with good teachers it yes. is so random well we are the first we are the uh, well we are uh, <laughs> Oh, we are the best school in the Slovakia where I go. So it's also well. It's the reason why we are good because we have some <laughs> good teachers who can explain us good, explain and can learn us the topic. And but uh, when I heard my friends, uh, that uh, his uh, their teachers uh, learn them like open the open page fifty from 
book and learn it. It's the best. It's the worst way to learn something, I think. <laughs> yeah. It, it is. What can we say? It, it's. It's a bit. <laughs> it's amazing that after two hundred years of development of education systems, we're still at that point. It's yeah. absolutely, absolutely amazing. What about um, what about things like homework? Do you get do you get a lot of homework from school? Oh, I don't think so. Well, uh, most of homework we uh, what we get it's from maths, and it's very good because. That teacher give us uh, a lot, not a lot of, but every lesson or every day some homeworks, and we have to uh, practice it in in our own in, at home. So it's very good, but <laughs> I don't know from and other subjects we get also some homeworks, but. They are, they are very simple. Mm -hmm. I think. So. so it's it's easy for you. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Do your uh, do your parents support you in your education? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, they also understand the situation of the s schools in. Uh, in Slovakia, so they know that it's not so a good way <laughs> in Slovakia, but what they can do and well in Slovakia there are very uh there are many many schools and not many but how to say <laughs> there are many schools but also many uh students and children and when in the class are 30 children students it's very hard to uh to le learn one uh one child one students because you have to learn 30 students and when 15 of 30 students are very stupid and they didn't they don't understand anything it's hard to uh to mm, i to get the better the clever uh more clever uh students in higher level level mm -hmm. it's the reason why i am also here and learn with you because in english lessons it we uh, we are ten students in our lessons, English lesson in, in school, and it's not so m many, but uh, our uh, our system of uh, learning English in our school is so bad because we uh, learn our uh our english very very slowly just now we just learn present simple and what it's present simple it's very simple <laughs> so it's it's also very bad system in our school and it's not the teacher's fault because she is also good but uh she has to do what schools say <laughs> uh, to her what to do yeah so. there there needs to be a level of flexibility in each system in order for the system to work the idea that you can plan in October what you need to do on Tuesday afternoon in March yeah. is, is crazy in my opinion because it might depend on the students, it might depend on how the teacher feels, it might depend on the weather outside. It, it, there are so many variables. Of course you need to have a general starting point and a sort of a target or a goal, but the, the idea that everything can be planned 
is, well, we, we all know what happens with a planned society. We end up with communism. I mean, everything is perfectly planned. So we have to be really, really careful yeah. <laughs> about um, having these perfect ideas about how everything is, is going to be. And um, there's an old saying by... There's an old book by John Steinbeck called Of Mice and Men, and it's based on a Scottish poet's writing. Uh, the title is Anyway, which... To get to the point, um, the best laid plans of mice and men often go wrong. It's a quote from a Scottish poet. And it, you can have the best plans, the best intentions in the world. You can have the best strategy for your basketball match. But sometimes it doesn't quite go according to plan. Yeah. And and we have to be prepared for um, good intentions to have bad results. And uh, we have to be prepared to work with those with those things as well and there's a lot of other things we could talk about but um, a final note that I want to make is it's really interesting when you've got a class with one teacher and say 30, 30 students because the students are there because they basically don't know much about the subject and so that's 30 people who don't know and one person who knows yeah. and this idea that if you spend a large amount of your time with people who are the same age, who have the same experience, which is almost maybe zero experience. The, the idea that you're going to learn something from people who are the same as you is just crazy. And all learning is a, is a vertical experience, which means you learn from people who are older with more experience than you. And they learn from people who are older with more experience than them. So all learning is going down the line like this. So if you have a classroom with 30 people who are all the same age with the same experience, there's no way that anyone can teach yeah. anyone anything at all except how to be bored, how to waste time, how to do stupid things, how to stick your finger up your nose and wipe it on a wall or under a desk or something or um, how to fight with each other or how to pick on the tiniest little detail about who someone's got a mark on their trousers or somebody's wearing a different jacket or somebody's hair's not right and you end up just focusing on stupid things instead of anything which is really important in life and imagine you've got one teacher who's age 40 and imagine you've got 30 students who are age 15 30 so 10 students who are age 15 is 150 years of experience of life. So if you've got 30 students, that's 450, that's a rough calculation, I hope that's okay, 450 years of experience of life on planet Earth. And on the other side, you've got a teacher with 40 years experience. So you've got 40 against 450. So who really has more experience of life? Yes, the teacher has been to teaching school. Yes, the teacher is well trained in their subject. Yes, it's the teacher's job to teach. But I just think it's interesting that there's more experience on the other side, really, yeah. than there is on the teacher's side. Now, that's that's something to something to to consider that. Um, when we expect one person to teach 30 people, we've got to realize that these 30 people, their experience in life is really important to consider uh, in, in that situation as well. Um, well. Hopefully the teacher's going to be well trained and ready and well prepared and is going to be able to communicate something and teach something to the group. But um, the teacher, I think, often has as much to learn from the students as the students have. <laughs> from the teacher and if you teach and you don't learn and grow at the same time you can't expect the students to grow because I like the way in the Slovak language that the word for teaching and learning is basically the same So, because it's the same thing you need to grow on both sides so when we work together and I'm trying to help you also at the same time I, I like to feel that that you're trying to help me as well by sharing your experiences with me. I get to learn something about the world because I don't see what you see and I don't do what you do. And through other people's experiences, we can also hopefully learn something.
as well. Thank you very much for doing this with me today. Thank you very much for uh, okay. finding the time for this and sharing your ideas about education. And all that's left to do is pause the video right 